Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I wanted to keep you guys abreast as to what is going on with the print testing that I spoke about about a month ago. It has not begun yet, and I'll leave it at that. I will be notified when the test begins, if at all, and that's where we are. I'm sorry I don't have any more details to provide you, but since I am here to talk about print testing, let me go ahead and discuss what actually happens. We'll talk about actually what happens during so-called accelerated fade testing processes. Now, compared to what most of us do in our so-called non-scientific fade tests that a lot of people will uh, perform at home, basically you will go ahead and create a print, and this is done on Red River San Gabriel paper, which is probably the best paper they currently have. Unfortunately, it is being phased out and I was lucky enough to get some of that. But there's a image that I printed on that paper using the Pro 100 Precision Colors ink. So that would be a great print to test against that dye ink. Dye inks are known to fade. They will fade uh, regardless of what you think. Um, often what happens is that people will just take a print, cover half of it up with something opaque like cardboard and paste it against the window and let it sit there. And so you have to consider the fact that everybody's window is gonna receive different amounts of light exposure. And think of it as a faucet running and you're trying to fill a gallon container. Depending on how open you have that faucet, it will either take seconds to fill that gallon container or minutes to fill that gallon container. So that's what happens if you have a little bit amount of light entering through the window then a week's worth of that type of exposure may equal uh, only one day on a fully sunlit window so again extremely unscientific and not really the proper way to do a fade test so what accelerated testing does is that they provide a given known amount of light, not amount, but intensity of light, times length of exposure, okay? And whatever that unit of measure is, is called a megalux, okay? So when you expose a print or a set of patches such as these, and I'll tell you how this is actually processed in a minute, you will then expose it to a given intensity of light for a given length of time, okay? And so after a certain length of time, you reach the one megalux amount of total light exposure, okay? Remember that gallon container. So you will then do another strip at a higher megalux, higher megalux, higher megalux, and eventually go through the point that no normal print in your home would ever, ever be exposed to that kind of a light onslaught, okay? So this is what we do, or this is what they do, not me. Take a print like this, okay? And they cut it down those lines into four different strips. And this is your control. The bottom one will go under dark storage. The first will go and be exposed to 20 megalux. 50 megalux, 100 megalux, and 200 megalux. Now let me tell you, some of the best pigment inks out there will start fading around 75, okay? And again, that does not mean years, that does not mean months or decades or whatever. It's not a measurement of like equal this amount of time your print will begin to fade, no. Remember, your conditions vary astronomically, they're like, all over the ballpark. This is a control test. So for instance, most third-party cheap inks that you buy on eBay, one to two megalux, that's all they will last. And um, good quality dye inks, maybe 10 megalux, maybe seven, maybe five, it depends. And then the higher megalux rating will be basically for a lot of your pigment type inks. And so pigments really just don't fade like organic or synthetic dyes tend to do. So that's how they are uh, measured. So what, what's actually being done 
is after these strips are exposed to light, they are then compared to the one kept in the dark, okay? And then actual measurements with a spectrophotometer are taken of all of the patches and then compared to the ones that were exposed to light. And then the differences are extrapolated. And again, to us, that means nothing. But what we need to know is whether the fading is equal across the board. If it's even fading, actually that's good. Even though it is fading, that is a very good thing. But if the fading is unequal or uneven, then you're gonna then fade into a color cast. So you're gonna lose your yellow, you're gonna have a cool looking, cyanish looking image. If you lose your cyan, you're gonna have a brownish, yellowish image. If you use your if you lose your magenta, you're gonna have a greenish image. So you want even fading throughout all of the different dye colors or pigment colors used in that particular ink set, okay? Black will fade as well, and sometimes it turns kind of brownish and causes a brown uh, bias or color cast. But that's what you do. You cut these out, and if you had a high intensity light box, you would place them in there, and then after, say, uh, a month, you remove one, and then after another month, you remove this one, and then four, and then eight months, and so on. And then you do the readings of all of those patches and then compare them to your master or control that was kept in the dark. The control in the dark should not fade. The controls under light exposure will fade regardless, regardless of whose ink it is, including OEM. And then you measure the differences and that will give you an approximation of how much light exposure does it take to cause a particular patch to fade, okay? What does that mean in time? Nothing to me. I have no clue what one megalux is worth in time, in years, in months. So don't put too much credence in these types of tests. Yeah, they will tell you when a particular ink will fade and how much light does it take to cause that fade to a certain amount of fade, okay? Again, it's a lot of scientific jargon, but to us, it means, does, will this print become a little bit lighter in several years of hanging on my wall, but the color will still be perfect? In other words, the color balance will not shift. That's fine, okay? Now, if I put this under glass, it will last decades on the wall. This is dye ink. I guarantee you, if you put this on a frame under glass and pop it on your regular wall, not something that's going to be, you know, on the, under the onslaught of sunlight, you will be fine. And that's all there is to this. People to put too much importance on, on so-called ink permanence, especially when they're jumping over to the third-party uh, side of the ballgame. Yeah, you're going to have problems with longevity if you jump over to third-party inks. But we all do so because we cannot afford OEM inks. And OEM inks have been tested, and they are the ones that you pay lots of money for and guarantee you certain levels of quality. So that's why you do that. If you cannot afford that, then you jump over to third-party inks, and then you have to accept the fact that longevity is not there, compared to OEM. Now, color balance can be achieved and can be achieved to a very close approximation to OEM, especially with a very good profile. And as you can see, I have nothing whatsoever to complain about this result. My goodness, this is awesome. This is the best I have ever seen. So again, keep in mind as well, paper. Paper has a lot to do with longevity. So this particular paper should afford me Many, 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 many years of permanence if I put this under glass. If I leave it outside, remember, these are organic dyes. They will be oxidized by pollutants that are in the air. If you're in an area that has a lot of electrical activity, you will have ozone generation and you will have oxidation due to ozone in the atmosphere. And ozone will affect some dye colors more than others. So you have to be very aware of that. So. What's next? I'm gonna buy me a frame and I'm gonna put this in an 11 by 14 frame and pop this on my wall. It will be the same for years, 
years to come. The boy will be 20 and we will not care about that photo anymore because I will be concentrating on that nice 20 year old grandson of mine rather than this baby picture of him. But you know, the digital file is still there. I can come back and reprint it if I want to, you know, relive the days when he was only four and a half. So again, that's it. Remember, these tests reflect total exposure of light, okay? Or volume of light. And if you are anywhere on a dye ink set, anywhere above five to six megalux, you're doing really good, especially since most other dye ink sets are only one to two and before they begin to show fading. So that is it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. I try to explain this as best as I can. I am no expert in this field, but this is what I um, know about the process and how it works. There are other types of testing that go on, and there's a lot of other categories that are actually um, introduced. And um, this is about as simple as one can get. And so I really like the way they do this. And so we will see. I will let you guys know when we have any word of uh, progress in this testing. But as of now, that's it. So try not to ask anymore because I don't have any more information to pass on to you. It might be months, it might be a year, who knows? Or it might not even be tested at all. It all depends. All right. Thank you so much again. Please subscribe, like, and share as always. And until the next time, everyone, happy printing. Bye-bye.